The last piece came off without a hitch. Here it is sitting in the corner, ready to be mated up with the rudder itself. Which, if we're going to get done, we better get started. This is the rudder section. So now I've gone through, and I've collected all the parts. I've got them out on the table, and I'm ready to start going. I want to do this section a little bit differently in that I want to give it more as a class. And I had kind of always wanted to do that in the beginning, but I'm still a beginner myself. So it's a little presumptuous of me to try to teach you how to do something that I'm only just now learning how to do. Um, but I thought I'd go ahead and give it a try with this section and see, hey, what's the worst that could happen? So the first couple of pages of this section seems to be about taking the parts which come as a solid piece and marking on them exactly what parts are supposed to be cut out and then go ahead and making those cuts. So it seems like the very first part of this, or at least for the first couple of pages, is taking our parts, taking a trusty ruler and a sharpie, and marking everything down before we go upstairs and give it a cut. I'm going to go through and mark everything, and I'll show that after I've done it, just to save time, and then I'll show you cutting upstairs. So I've gone through and I've marked up the first three pieces, which account for the first three steps in this particular uh, section of the plans. Something else I went through and did just to be sure is I marked each of the pieces that were going to be our new separate pieces accordingly. One thing I tried was to use a pair of metal shears to make these cuts. It was a little awkward even though I do have a left and a right of these uh, the, the simple fact of the matter is, you, you probably can't see it, but it, it kind of bent ever so slightly the, uh, the metal along the cut line. It wasn't drastic. In fact, it's really subtle. Uh, but for me, I really feel that I would rather do this on the bandsaw and get a cleaner cut. The other thing is, is as you th this beginning cut is wide enough that it's actually fairly easy to get the shears in there. But as you get farther inside of this, it becomes much more difficult. So, uh, let's go cut. And there you have it. A good bandsaw will make pretty short work of everything. I did have to go out and buy a new blade, though, because the blade that I had was actually designed for wood, not metal. Don't try to use a wood blade on metal. It will go poorly for you. I've learned that lesson from other videos. I didn't try to do it. Um, so that's it. That's the first three steps. I'm going to take these back downstairs, put them in order, and work on the next step. So there are seven stiffeners that we have to go through and cut. We have seven pieces of metal that are all identical, and we have to go through and turn these seven pieces of metal into 14 different chunks. Chunks, of course, being a technical term. This is another really good example of something that's going to take just a good amount of time. It's not terribly difficult. You know, uh, measure and mark off the part and cut it. But uh, there's a lot of cutting. You've got to cut the ends here for each and then in the middle for each. And you can see each one gets progressively larger. Now the nice thing about that is it means that as we get farther and farther and make these smaller and smaller, we'll have this center area that we can use as a dummy or test area for riveting practice or for just general abuse. Alright, let's get started. Alright now, I've got them all marked up. Now let's go cut them up. So this last one's going to present a bit of a problem. The issue is the marks so close to the center that I can't quite get a clean cut in here just due to the distance between this part of my blade or my bandsaw and my blade. It's just too long. It would have to be about there. So instead, I'm going to try using the snips. The tin snips seemed to work just fine. There was a little bit of deforming, as is the nature of using tin snips, but I think I can clean that up and bend it back and then maybe give it a, 
no, a little pass on the bandsaw again just to get the edge a little smoother. So all in all, not too bad. The next step is to cut the shape the ends on all of the pieces I made. All right, 7-3, that was step one. It's the only step on the page. Basically, we turned 14 pieces of metal, or sorry, seven pieces of metal into 14. Cut off the various bits and got them cleaned up and ready to use. That's it. Time to move on to the next one. These steps kind of go quick, don't they?